The screen door flapped shut as the porch door opened. She heard nothing more. Who had made entry? Trip Unwin, the serial killer who left bodies throughout Sacramento and the Delta, including her property, was the only person she knew who could pick a lock that easily. Surely he couldn't be out of prison. Or escaped? Having admitted to over thirty murders, he should have received the sentence of lethal injection. But California had long ago stopped the death penalty. She touched the cell phone hanging on her waistband. She would go back into the attic and bolt the door and call 911. She heard only silence. Just as she turned to climb back up into the attic, the door between the porch and kitchen opened. Sarah, Sarah, where are you? She expelled a forceful breath and nearly collapsed from relief. He must have paused on the back porch to check the alarm system in case he needed to disarm it before it sounded. She had left the alarm system off this morning, since the contractor needed to come in and out. She quickly descended the staircase and met him at the bottom. Hux, you told me you'd be here tomorrow. Got away early. His smile beamed. His blue topaz eyes held their constant sparkle. How could he look so fresh after the flight from his home in Oregon? His dark hair was must. He preferred fresh air regardless of the heat, and always drove with the windows down. Huxley could wear everyday clothes and still look like a model. His checkered teal and orange flannel shirt over a teal t-shirt fit in with the local faded vibe. So did his light brown urban shepherd boots and denim jeans rolled at the ankles. Then how he could reinvent himself with a suit and tie was amazing. A man for all seasons. Just a tall, broad-shouldered, better-than-average looking guy with eyes that made her melt. She finally calmed. You're not driving your truck. He looked at her curiously and waited for her explanation. I always recognize the sound of your pickup. The door slammed too, but something's different. He dropped a 12 by 12 by 8 inch sealed cardboard box with airline's carry-on tags onto the little breakfast table that stood in the middle of the kitchen. He shed the flannel shirt and hung it on the back of a chair then smiled and nodded as if pleased she noticed. Noticing such small details was critical in the cold case searches that they investigated. Had a blowout. My cell is dead. Left my truck in Elk Grove and got a loner. He thumbed toward the outside. Elk Grove? That's a short drive up the road. You could have borrowed a phone. I'd have picked you up. He feigned disappointment at the scolding as they stood beside the table. Sorry, wanted to surprise you. Ha, huh, you did. They stood smiling at each other. Then they rushed into a tight embrace. Sarah raised up on tiptoes as the six-foot Huxley took her into his strong arms. He was muscular, and Sarah always felt safe when he wrapped her in his arms. They kissed lovingly. Missed you. Couldn't get here fast enough. He breathed deeply. Sarah always put on a spritz of her favorite Balaje perfume every morning, no matter what. Huxley reveled in the scent of it. Somehow a tantalizing scent seemed to seal their wants during hugs. The tire problem was unexpected but for Huxley to allow his cell phone power to run down was unheard of. Usually he was astute about everything. Yet, recent developments, or lack thereof, in the search for his MIA brother's remains was pulling his thoughts in too many directions.